this whole wildlife management, it's a year-round job. There, there's no doubt about it. Starting about around the 15th of May, we really don't need to be bush hogging and uh, clipping and disking anything that's, you know, three or four feet high because we're going into the to the nesting season. So we we on our place we have this deadline by a certain date. We're not going to do anything. We don't we don't want the place disturbed during the nesting season. Uh, I don't even like clipping the roads then. So we sort of let it go. So anything we do to get ready to plant, we want it done before then. I don't really want anybody on my place until after the, the until July. July 4th is the first time we'll come back in here. My wife thinks I'm a fanatic. No, we're not going to disturb. I don't want the rabbits disturbed. I don't want the quails disturbed. I don't want the deer with their phones. I mean, you can come out here in the, in the, in the evenings, more so than in the mornings, and you'll see mama with her spotted baby. And I, I think getting the bugs or ticks or whatever off of her babies, I mean, there is nothing like that. The only way you can make it work and not disturb the habitat is you have to have some pretty intense planning. You can do all of this intense planning. You can probably do every bit of it in an hour. The plan starts when, when, with when you would ideally want to plant. Then the, the, the smart thing to do is back up six weeks. Six weeks before your planting date, you need to have it on your calendar to go to your hunting camp, clip uh, your old crop or your weeds or whatever. I am not a big proponent of burning them down like with chromoxone or glyphosate and drying them out. I would rather turn it under green than let it dry out dead and turn it under. It's just gonna create more fertilizer and more nutrients and more moisture and more bacterial activity to turn, to turn green grass under rather than, or weeds, than to turn brown ones under. What you're doing is you're managing your soil by turning this residue under. Over the course of three or four weeks, that stuff is gonna all but completely dissipate. Now, and I know we, at Delta Ag, we recommend soil solution be put out, which speeds that process up and it'll help you tremendously. It'll do in three months what it normally takes uh, the soil by itself to do in a year. What you're doing is you're trying to manage your crop residue, which is going to add bacterial activity. It's gonna help the soil to become more like a sponge. It's going to hold more moisture. The opportunity then is when it rains, it'll actually store or bank moisture instead of that moisture hitting a compacted soil and running off into the creek. So what you're doing is you're prepping your soil for a good seed bed. Some two weeks before you get ready to plant the crop, you can come in, flatten your disc out, or whatever you've got to can drag that field smooth, and you drag that field smooth, so that now all you're doing is waiting on a rain, and when you get the rain, you drop in behind it, and you plant. People are so busy, and they're, they're trying to make a living, and they're working, you know, they're working eight to five, and so you have to find time to do all of these things. And you look up and say, oh my gosh, we forgot about it. So let's run over here and that's a bush hog. We're gonna disc, we're gonna throw out fertilizer and seed, cover it and go to the house. And then you wanna know what's wrong with your seed or what's wrong with your fertilizer. The truth is there's nothing wrong with any of it. It's the way you did it. Proper planning, I, I believe, is the key to everything that we do in wildlife management. On our place, we found we have found that one of the uh, the things that we we thought was a detriment that turns out to be of real value to us is native vegetation. We noticed, for example, everybody, my wife included, you got to get rid of the kudzu. You got to get rid. It's killing everything. It's turning. It's growing. It's doing all the stuff. It's horrible. It's killing all the big, pretty oak trees. In reality, over time, we got to watching, and we kept noticing every time we'd come past this, and it's a huge patch, I guess you would, of uh, kudzu. We were always running deer out. Every time we turn around, we're running deer out. We get to looking at it, and these deer are browsing like crazy on this kudzu. So I did a little research, and I found out that this kudzu, which grows real fast, it's putting out leaves, and it's just starting to green up now. But it's steady putting out leaves all summer long, and these things are real, real high in protein. So we came up with the idea, as crazy as it may seem, and people, some people think I'm crazy, other people know I'm crazy, we finally decided what we needed to do is try to isolate the kudzu where it couldn't spread. 
and then we started fertilizing it and spraying it with our plant power to enhance the growth of it. And it's probably one of the most productive food plots that we've got on our place. Uh, the other thing that we do is we spray our blackberries and our beauty berry and our honeysuckle and that kind of stuff. So, uh, and yes, we have access to these products, but we use these products on native vegetation as diligently as we do on our food plots. It's amazing to me when I've got a six-year-old grandson who is looking at a deer with his granddaddy, and the deer is a nice little, you know, nice little four-pointer, six-pointer. He says, Papa, that's a baby. We don't want to shoot the baby. I mean, when I was his age, I'd have been unloading on him because I might not get to see another deer for three years. But for me, uh, and, and I think for a lot of grandparents, it's all about the grandchildren and leaving something for the next generation so they can enjoy it and understand what it is and how important it is. And uh, I, I, I won't lie to you, I spend time and people say, oh, he's six years old, he doesn't understand. Believe me, that child understands when I talk to him about protecting the trees, protecting the forest from a fire. Why are we burning this, Papa? We don't want it to get on fire when we're not here. We want to control it. We want to make sure the deer have everything they need. The turkeys have a nesting area. God gave us this, and it is our job to take care of it while we're here because the truth is, it's going to be here. It's going to still be here when we're gone. What kind of shape are we going to leave it in? Hey, I think everybody will agree, Johnny is a true mad scientist of the food plot world. Now, today, from every angle, you get hit with magic, and everybody has their magic for growing food plots. But the difference is Johnny, his magic's based on science, research, and results. Now remember, Johnny's not just a gamekeeper because he's one of the best there is at growing food plots, but even more so is because his obsession is helping you and me and all of us grow our best food plots making your dirt the best it can be, living your best life outdoors. That's the life of a gamekeeper. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, and we look forward to having you back next week right here on the Gamekeepers of Mossy Oak.